Good morning. We are taking a trip to our new property soon, but first we have to head on a shorter trip to Anchorage. <laughs> yes, we just got a call. We were expecting a shipment. Actually, we weren't even really expecting it. All no. of a sudden it was just there. So we have a shipment in Anchorage. We're gonna go pick it up. We have two trucks, two trailers. It's a big, heavy load. We're gonna head there. It's two hours away. Yep, let's go. Nice 12 degrees. Got it, you ready? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go around the back and see if they're over there. You got room this way, you can go this way. So you're not putting anything else in my truck? No, it just is. It's heavy. I know, it looks heavy. <laughs> Well, we are surely loaded. We are totally loaded up. American Fast Freight did a great job. They did a great job loading us up. So we have to get things struck down and head home now. You all hooked? Yes. Oh, guys. I didn't even think it was really gonna fit. They got us loaded up good. We're gonna have to, gonna have to drive slow on the way home. I didn't think it was gonna fit on that other trailer. This Tundra has a heavy load. This whole load that we're picking up right now has a combined weight of 11,700 pounds. This might not look like it's very heavy, but it is heavy. I'll tell you, this little Tundra, we're pushing the capacity. Ariel's gonna be driving it. She's gonna be an ice road trucker now. Okay, locked and loaded. We'll see you guys back at the cabin. We made it home last night. We got a little bit of snow. Obviously, I'm just dusting off the load on the silver truck. You might be wondering what the heck this thing is that we just picked up on our two trailers. This, believe it or not, is gonna be our new shop up at our new property. It is called a Quonset Hut. Pretty popular up here in Alaska. I mean, not every single person has them, but you see them around. They come in all different shapes, styles, sizes. This one's pretty unique style, and it also is a pretty big structure it's about 40 feet wide 60 feet long we are super excited to get this thing hauled up there we're getting ready we're not leaving for a couple days we had the snow last night there's more snow coming in tonight so we're kind of just making sure our loads are secure and ready we had a couple issues when we drove back from anchorage to here the light on this trailer one of the taillights was just like on like it was the brake was on so i have to fix that on the trailer arrow was towing the metal on these things is sharp on the edges so as she's hitting bumps it started to wear through a couple of the straps so we're going to unhook hers and we're going to put some plastic underneath the straps between the metal of the building and then the strap itself we are also going to divvy up these loads a little bit different i was driving the silver truck i felt like this one was pretty light and it could definitely take a lot more weight and then we switched and i drove the black truck and that one felt extremely heavy I don't know why, but those little stacks of metal, I think it's because they're stacked so tightly. They're just really heavy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna untie that one. We're gonna transfer some of that onto here, tie it down, and I think we'll be ready to go in a couple days. Building you a doghouse, dude. One twenty-four. 
We have everything. So it turns out we probably should have done that inventory check prior to going to pick this shipment up. Um, <laughs> these two we thought were the same, even though one's clearly longer and one is much bigger. It's actually double the panel. So it's it's double and it's longer, which is why this trailer is so loaded down. And we've made a decision. We're going to be taking about half of the longer, bigger, heavier ones off and putting them onto that trailer just to kind of evenly distribute our weight better. Well, not evenly. This one has quite a bit less, but that's what we're going to be doing. So this one doesn't have to tow as much up to the new property. Okay, it was a truck. It was a truck? The plug, I just had to wiggle it and it, it worked, so. Brakes? Good? Everything's perfect. just snow it's really not a big deal we have got everything situated equally at least how we want them on the trailers and we decided that we're going to be bringing our snow blower with us because there's a lot of snow up there and we want to make sure we can get in the driveway to unload this thing so that's going to go right here we're just about ready to go we're going to get ariel's trailer all cinched down and tied down and we'll see you guys when we take off Okay. Yeah, can you hold it back for me? I, can... I got it. I'm not going to drop it. I just didn't want to smash the thing. Today's the day. We've got our jumbo size pot of coffee. And we're getting ready to hit the road. Seven forty-five. We were hitting the dusty trail. It snowed the other day, and Eric did a bunch of snow removal. So hopefully, there's not too much snow on the roads. We've got a long drive, long journey, and we're gonna take it safe and slow. And I've got, I've got the dogs with me. Right. like that before left. Yeah, I know. 
I hit something or something. Let's see. Hey, yeah, this thing don't work, so. Okay, let's some more air. I've got, I guess, one minute. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. Go for a few more hours? Yeah, let's go. Okay, well, we're not making the best time, but that's okay. We are alive, so that's all that matters. They didn't plow like a big section of the road, so we had to go really slow, and that's just life. You have to be super prepared when you come out here and be ready because they don't always get to the road, so. Bathroom break for everyone. Come on. Come on. Maybe lunch break or breakfast break? Tires holding, so we should be good. Okay. Okay, roadside coffee. We are getting there. The road conditions are good for being winter in Alaska. So whatever that means, but we're getting close. Here's mine. Okay, okay I'll go. see you there. Well, nine hours later, we officially made it. It was a long drive. Yeah, I'm super hungry for dinner and I'm hoping we can like get in that driveway. We will see you here shortly. It's the trailer that's really stuck too. It's definitely a lot of snow. We could get through without trailers, no problem. Yeah, I should have taken it. I should have taken the turn wider and really gassed it, but you should, then, you then should I would have slammed into you. you should have taken my tracks. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that tug. You ready? How'd you like that maneuvering? Oh my right there? gosh! Did you watch that? Early right there. He's scaring the dogs. All right, boys. There's there's a lot more snow here than I thought there was gonna be. Oh my gosh! We got here like just just before it got dark, huh? We made it. We have arrived. I am super glad we brought the snow blower. There's a lot more snow out here than we thought there was gonna be. We made it up the driveway though. Had to give Ariel a couple tugs, but to unload our stuff and do some things to the trailers, we're gonna need to get rid of some of the snow, but. Let's head inside and see if we can warm this place up. I think it was nine degrees when we got here. Where's that? Uh, I thought we had a broom here or something, no? The dogs would like to go inside as well. Alright, let's start fire. Did it say it was about ten outside? Mine said it was nine. What was your what's this saying? It's also saying ten. Well, just the way it spins in that soft, fluffy snow, I didn't know if I should keep going with it or just let well, it be. If you're moving, I would keep going, you know what I mean? Yeah, but once you get stopped, I just... I'm already warm from getting this wood.
hungry. Take a fish sandwich if I heated it up. Yeah, I just don't black stuff. Maybe ash or something. I don't feel like eating anything cold. Okay, get warm soon. Okay. You What a crazy day it's been. That was a very long drive to get here. It's been probably like two hours since Eric got this fire started and it throws a lot of heat. So I think we're just at like 60 degrees now. Still pretty chilly, but next to this fire, it is like extremely hot as you can tell by Bandit. So we are gonna stay for a few days this time. Pretty excited about that. And tomorrow morning we're gonna get started with some snow blowing and getting our Quonset hut shop. I love it. Are you making English muffins yet? I think he would like to sleep on this mattress too. He's sleeping right now. Breakfast in bed. Thank you. The coffee's really good too. How'd you sleep? Amazing. Plowing is going good so far. It's actually the easiest plow job we've ever done because it's so straight and level here. We're doing a little bit of the driveway. We're doing the area where we're gonna leave the Quonset hut and then we're also kind of gonna get this whole area <laughs> right where our trucks are kind of cleared up too. It's gonna to snow quite a bit more, I imagine. And we just wanna make sure that we can still get back here and come during the winter. <laughs> I kind of like sloped over there. I saw you kind of got it a little. You um, you make the same face I make. It's fun, but you like squint because the snow's blowing on you. Yeah, got the whole area out front of the house done. Actually, I just did a tiny bit. Errol did this all herself. She also cleared a big area over by where we dropped off our Connex, and that's where we're gonna be unloading the Quonset hut. That's not next on the list. Next is we're gonna go inside and we're gonna start working on dinner because that's gonna take a few hours. 
and then we'll come back out and see if we can get that sucker unloaded. Oh my god, I'm out of breath already. I don't think we've showed the outhouse here before, but this place does have a nice little outhouse. Woo. It's got the little double doors on it. It's brand new, and the way it's built is it has two 55 gallon drums in the ground. So I think it's a six foot or an eight foot hole, but it is far from the cabin. And I walked out here in my pajamas this morning and up to my knees in the snow. So <laughs> clearing a little path. And clean up a little. That's it. Nice basic outhouse built out of like sawmill lumber, it looks like. Okay, now we can get out here. All right, let's head inside. Very exciting dinner here. We didn't get a moose this year, but we traded a couple chickens for some things, and that included a moose roast, but this is corned moose. So we're doing corn moose and potatoes. We also have onions, uh, turnips, garlic. This is gonna be good. So I'm gonna sear this, and then we're gonna add a bunch of ingredients, including some chicken broth, and it's gonna go on the wood stove, and then we're gonna head back outside and get to work. radiator has full of coal in it and that's what cycles through the motor to keep it cold. So yeah that can do Well, by the time we got to the last pallet, we figured out a good way to unload them. These things are so awkward and big. They're actually pretty heavy, but we're using gravity now in the slippery trailer. I'm just sliding them on. We're getting there. I think we got like 40 more, 50 more pieces to go. First step complete. We've got the shop, almost the entire shop, unloaded here. And Eric did a great job. We've got some tarps. Hopefully that'll keep it covered. I'm not really sure. It should be fine sitting out in the snow. It's kind of hard to imagine this being complete in the future, but these are the corner pieces, the arches. This is like the top arch. And I think it's maybe an A model from this company. I'm not quite sure, but it has like the straight edges. So it's a lot of metal. It was heavy, but this was the first step that we needed to complete. And thankfully it's frigid out here. Thankfully we have a warm meal inside to look forward to.
Well, I don't think there's any way that that isn't going to be extremely good. The chicken broth has like thickened and shrunk down. This looks amazing. We're going to get this. What's it? Corned moose. Cut up. Oh my gosh, this stuff is so good. It's called Tomb. It's a Lebanese garlic sauce, or almost like a paste. I don't even know how to explain this stuff, but it's absolutely amazing. So we're gonna do a little bit of that in there. It's really spicy, almost like horseradish. And then how could we forget? A little bit of sauerkraut. There we go. It was a long, cold day and we got a nice hot meal. It's gonna be delicious. Mmm. Wow. Can you please try a potato and dip it in the liquid? It's probably the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. The chicken roll? The potato though and everything. Yeah. It is, it is really good. I just was like smiling because of the sauce, the paste. It was cold out there. Just my fingers were really kind of getting cold. My face was cold. Hooked up to power. Got the little Furman generator out here. This little Furman, I don't know, she's a good generator. It's six degrees out here. We have not had a single problem with this thing in cold weather yet. We'll see as it gets colder. We're gonna go inside and take it easy the rest of the night. No joke, this thing, oh, there's a hole right there. This thing literally weighs like 80 pounds. Well, we've already had our coffee and breakfast and we're gonna go down under. Uh, this house has a crawl space and I've only been down there a couple times and it's never been while the house was heated. So I'm interested to see after being in this house and heating it for like almost three days, we've kept it between like 70 and 80 degrees. So pretty warm in here. And the outside temperature has been pretty cold. We've been like anywhere from zero to, I think we hit 22 below uh, Fahrenheit. So very cold outside, very warm inside the house. I wanna see if the warmth of the house is traveling below down into the crawl space. And the reason that's important is keeping like pipes and stuff warm. So you can see right below, this house has something that I'm gonna call pretty unique. And that is the well right there, or the well head. And this has about, a we think it's a hundred foot well and the house sits on top of the well, which is pretty unique. A lot of times the house will have a well separate from the house and then you'll have to dig a water line to your house. This one, the water comes straight up, takes a left and goes to the pressure tank right there. So I'm gonna get my boots on, headlamp, and we're gonna head down there. Okay, There's so reflectix down there? Just that's reflectix, yeah. So this is your power for the well. This is just the electricity for it. It's super crazy because I'm touching this right here. It's definitely cooler down here. It's not as cold as you would think is what you mean? For being negative, I think it's about negative 10 out right now. No, it's not very cold at all. You wanna come on down and we can check it out? Sure. Okay. There's I'll a lot down. of uh... You didn't tell me there were novels down here. What's a novel? A novel, oh, a novels? book. Yeah, there's a whole thing of books. There's some, hey, actually this I stuff. would say. Oh, look at this. That's a brand new electric heater, huh? I don't know why any of that, but it is. So this is the pipe that goes to the septic tank. 
from the toilet, the shower. What's back over there? The two pipes. sinks. That's like all the uh, extra pipe. That's well, to the sink. The that goes to the, the sink in the kitchen. That goes to the sink in the bathroom, toilet, and shower. That's the propane line to the stove and to the water heater. It's definitely a crawl space. There's not a lot of room down here. Now that I'm down here, I'm genuinely <laughs> feeling like this is like 60, 50. I want to say this is 60. Yeah, what I want to do is I want to crawl. I guess that corner right there is furthest away from the wood, so that should be the coldest corner, right? But I'm feeling this this line for the septic tank, and it's like warm. It's pretty amazing that that wood stove, you notice there's no insulation in the floor. So this is like, it can just fall into the the crawl space. Uh, can I get over there? Let me see if I can get over there. Let's just turn around. Oh my God, it's like, <laughs> it is super warm over here. Oh, okay, I'm kind of stuck under here, but this is awesome under here. Like I said, it's extremely cold outside. It's about 10 below Fahrenheit and it is warm down here. I just located the little control box for the well pump. Looks like it has a half horsepower well pump, 115 volts, it says 12 amps. I don't really know the electrical terms very well, but I know that this well pump is smaller because we've ran it off of just a 2000 watt generator and it barely even revs up that generator, which is nice considering we're gonna be running it off a solar system. I've also been wanting to come down here because I've been eyeballing this spot as a good area to keep batteries for a solar system. And the warmer you keep your batteries, the better they perform. At our cabin back home, our batteries are outside. So when winter hits and it gets below freezing, you start to kind of uh, notice a difference on how long they're holding their charge. So this is gonna be an awesome little area down here. I think I'm gonna to head to that corner and just kind of keep looking around down here. Okay, once this field trip's over, you want to head outside and head outside? <laughs> yeah, let's head outside. Got work to do. Do you think that it'll be fine on the way home? If it's not, we can put it on that trailer and pull it home. The truck? I have extra coolant, so as long as we don't overheat her. Do you think it's the water pump this time, though? Well... It's, it's hard to see, but unfortunately, as we we're moving trucks around out here and getting that uh, Quonset hunt loaded, we noticed some red fluid on the ground, which was antifreeze. These Toyotas, they have red antifreeze in them. We couldn't find it. We didn't know what truck it was. We tried to drive them around and get them to leak again, and they weren't leaking. And then we took this one out again to go put gas in the trucks before we left. And I saw a couple drips coming from this truck. So it's this truck. I think I found where it's coming from. I'm pretty sure it's the water pump. This truck has had its water pump replaced twice. Uh, it's kind of like a flaw in these trucks, I think, these 4.7 Tundras. So I think that's where it's coming from. We should be good on the way home. I have extra fluid, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on this. Worst case scenario, we can put this truck on that other trailer. So that'd be worst case scenario though. <laughs> Perfect, I spotted these little surveyor stakes last time we were up here and we're gonna go mark out a potential build site for the new shop. You know, I want room to be able to get behind it and do things. I don't want it like right against there. So we need to go, what is it, 37? That's 37. Dang, you're way over there. Okay, this is awesome. We've got our general perimeter. It's probably gonna change a little bit, but we've been eyeballing this spot since we first got here because a few different reasons. It's a large area that's already been cleared and they had the roots removed, so it's perfect for this big shop that we're planning on. Also, it's in the shade. So we have a lot of things that we have to prioritize for sun, like chickens, garden, solar panels, all that kind of stuff. Even, you know, if you were to cut wood in the winter, I feel like you'd want that to be in the sunshine. So the shop is not really gonna have windows and it's okay if it is in a shaded location. So this is a good, honestly, this is like a perfect area. I feel like it's meant for it. Sadly, there are a few big trees that would have to go. Just a few. 
isn't that big when you think about it. No, actually, uh, it really doesn't a 40 big. by 60 area, is not. I was thinking it was going to be just massive. massive. But it, this is like I could already fill it up. There's the cabin right there. Cool. Mission accomplished. getting to be about that time where we're going to turn the generator on and this is where we've been running it which is right next to the house there's a little plug right here that plugs it in but we also have like a little generator room that i'm not too sure of yet so that's over in the green shed so we're going to try it out tonight well here's the plug Here's the plug that goes to the house. Oh, this is a 30 amp. The previous guy who lived here, who we bought it from, he just kind of vacationed here. It wasn't his full-time home, so he never really came in the winter. He only came in the summer, and he ran this a little Honda generator just outside of the cabin. So what I think this area is, is this is more set up for like a bigger permanent generator. And I think what we're gonna have to do is get a bigger permanent generator for this place. We wanted to upgrade to a bigger one anyways. And we'll have to do some sort of exhaust that vents outside. Right now, when you put this front, uh, like insulated cover up on the front here, it would just be completely sealed. So there would be nowhere for the exhaust to go, nowhere for it to suck in the air. So you do need to have it vented for the exhaust. So you do need a little bit of an intake. But the reason for this room, its main purpose is to keep your, your generator warm uh, when it gets really cold. So unfortunately, we don't have the right plug. We can't use it now. So we'll just plug it outside of the house and we know for next time. Well, you know we take our dessert pretty seriously. I'm not sure why I said that. I don't know if we take our dessert pretty seriously, but we are making banana boats. Uh, Eric has had these before. I don't think I've had them before until last year when we first tried them and they're delicious. You can put whatever you want in them. You take a banana, you slice it in half, and then we're gonna put a whole bunch of ingredients on top, throw it inside of the wood stove, cook it for a little bit, and then top it with whipped cream. I have some nuts, coconut, shreds, chocolate chips, and I think there's like something else in there, but I can't figure out what it is. So we're just gonna like layer that all in there. Okay, maybe we're gonna come up with a different word for this because this is not a boat. Oh yes, that's my other ingredient. <laughs> we have some frozen blueberries too that we we brought. These are really good on there. Topped it with some fresh honey. We're gonna get this wrapped up. I'm gonna make Eric one, two, and it's a little bit messy. Messy job here. I think this is how we wrap it. I'm not really sure. Those are gonna be done in about two minutes. Voila! There you have it. Dessert is served. I'm sure it's going to be delicious. 6.45 a.m., our last morning at the cabin, and it was a good trip. We're gonna bring the snowblower home with us, and we hope to get out here, hopefully within another few weeks, do some visiting and bring some more stuff up. But that's gonna do it for this trip. We got a long drive home. We're gonna get the trucks warmed up, the dogs loaded up, and we're hitting the road. See how cold it is this morning. Warmed up a lot. It's nine degrees. Holy it's cow! Warm That's why it doesn't feel very cold. Oh yeah, she doesn't like the cold. It's the coldest morning of the trip. Negative. 22 degrees Fahrenheit. Got some leftover hot water. There we go. Oh my gosh. That was probably the best one I've ever done. It turns into all vaporized. <coughs> 